guys, David the Anastasian here. I want to take a minute to talk to you guys about tourniquets. Uh, I know lots of you guys got firearms to go out shooting all the time. Um, I know you guys are involved in the military, law enforcement, fire, EMS, uh, ju or just concerned citizens. Basically, uh, tourniquets are a, uh, the utmost importance, especially with these um, kind of mass shootings that are happening. You never know when you might find yourself in a situation where you need to apply a tourniquet. Um, this can go back from yeah, the Boston bombing to uh, the Vegas shooting through the Thousand Oaks shooting as well. Um, you could be out in the middle of nowhere going about your day uh, and something happens where a tourniquet might save somebody's life. Right down here, I've got some tourniquets laid out. Uh, these are just a few of many, many different types of tourniquets available out on the market. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you guys buy something from uh, a very reputable source, uh, such as North American Rescue, uh, Tactical Medical Solutions. Um, there are knockoffs out there. I'm sure they do, will do the job just fine. Uh, but again, they don't come with that guarantee uh, or, or that have been tested over and over and over by the military and independent parties. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about are these CAT tourniquets. CAT tourniquets stand for uh, Combat Action Tourniquet. They're the most widely used tourniquet uh, in the military uh, and in law enforcement. Uh, tourniquets have been kind of controversial over the last few years. It's started to move toward uh, the kind of first line defense towards an arterial bleed. Tourniquets are meant to stop arterial bleeding. Uh, as far as, if you don't have any medical experience, as far as you guys are concerned, uh, there's a major amount of bleeding coming from an extremity, that being your arms or your legs only. You can't tourniquet, you know, your waist, you can't tourniquet your neck, uh, and, and it's really just from, yeah, the shoulders down uh, and, like, your, your groin to your feet. Uh, there's a lot of blood coming out. Typically, it's going to be squirting out uh, bright in color uh, and coming out in a massive, uh, massive volume. They come uh, packaged just like this. You're going to be having a little bit of uh, some plastic wrap over them. I like to take the plastic wrap off. It is uh, it just makes it a lot faster to get to. You don't have to fumble with trying to tear it off. Uh, what I like to do is I like to set my tourniquets up like this. Uh, this white band is just a time marker. Uh, you really should be marking down uh, when you've put this tourniquet on. Uh, can make a difference at the hospital. Uh, how long that's been on as uh, if you're within like four or five hours uh, from the time of injury to the hospital, you probably should be all right and they'll figure it out from there. It's not on you guys. This is from a first responder perspective. Uh, but basically, these cat tourniquets, uh, you can apply to yourself or to somebody else. I'm going to demonstrate uh, applying a cat tourniquet to myself. Uh, and then uh, in a later clip, you'll see me applying it to somebody else. Um, so in this scenario, we'll say... Uh, I have a amputation of my left hand uh, right at the wrist. I'm squirting out blood, lots of hemorrhaging, uh, and it needs to get a tourniquet. So first thing I'm going to do without this hand, give a quick snap of your wrist, and this should open up uh, into a, a pretty big loop. You can slide this all the way up to your shoulder, and that's has been uh, the kind of primary preferred uh, location for the tourniquet. There's other, more deliberate, if you have a little bit of medical training, you can apply it just above the wound to save as much tissue as possible. Uh, but for the average person watching this channel, high and tight, or high on the limb and as tight on the limb as you can go. So first thing you do is you uh, Velcro that strap, get it nice and tight, uh, and then you start cranking down on uh, this bar right here. This is called a windlass. Um, it can be pretty painful uh, if you're doing it to yourself uh, or if you're doing it to another person. Be aware that they might be yelling at you to stop or telling you it hurts, um, but ignore them. Get this tourniquet on, get it as tight as possible, uh, and you should. once it's on, you should start seeing uh, that bleeding either stop completely or slow down uh, significantly. Uh, the next thing, once you got this tourniquet uh, in place and you're pretty confident or you're seeing signs that that bleeding stops, Go ahead and lock that wind less in. Uh, it's a piece of Velcro on the top. If you can, have the ability to. If you don't, not a big deal. Uh, just write down that time uh, when that tourniquet was applied. To check the effectiveness, um, again, in this scenario, if I was completely missing this arm, uh, but for practice purposes, uh, you can check your radio pulse. If I don't have a pulse there, 
it means I've effectively occluded that artery. Um, if I do, don't panic. Just do a couple more cranks on there. It's going to hurt, but you need to get this as tight as possible to stop that bleeding. Um, you should start seeing, uh, it, it might start bleeding a little bit, uh, just kind of dripping out, uh, but that squirting bright red blood, uh, that should start going away uh, pretty quickly. Uh, you can leave these on for a few hours, um, but definitely, if you haven't already, uh, get emergency services on the way, tell them that you have a tourniquet in place, and kind of describe the injury uh, or the reasoning that uh, behind why you've uh, placed a tourniquet. Um, never, ever uh, remove a tourniquet. Um, as far as you guys are concerned, there are a few people, uh, trained medical professionals, that are able to remove tourniquets uh, on, a, on a live injury. Um, but as far as you guys are concerned, definitely just leave it in place. Don't touch it. Um, make sure it doesn't come loose. If you can, tape it down, secure it uh, as best you can with whatever you have. This next tourniquet is called a soft T tourniquet. Um, these were developed for special forces. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, I've, there's been studies come out and reports showing uh, that, I mean, this is just a strip of nylon uh, with the same kind of thing. It's got a windlass that cranks down when it gets uh, wet, uh, especially with blood. Uh, it can start to come loose. But it's the same concept. You slide this on over the injury, pull it down tight, but the next thing you want to do is secure, there's a little screw here. It's like an alligator clip. It keeps that clip from coming, uh, coming loose. And you can just, same process, start cranking down. The only advantage to this tourniquet over a cat tourniquet, that in my opinion, um, is that the windlass is made out of metal. So cat tourniquets are made out of plastic. Um, they are susceptible to heat if they start, you know, if you're in a hot environment, especially if you're overseas, whatever, um, they definitely uh, can start to degrade a little bit if you are um, in, you know, temperatures like 120 degrees plus. Uh, same concept though, these lock in, uh, there's got two bars on there, you can still, uh, attach them to both if you want, just one's fine. Uh, definitely secure this, if you got some extra tail, uh, you can wrap it around, and try and tie a knot, whatever you want to do. Uh, just make sure this tourniquet isn't going anywhere. Same thing, you should see the signs of the bleeding stopping. Uh, if you can, check for that pulse, if there's no pulse there, you've got it done effectively. The last thing I want to talk about is... Uh, an improvised tourniquet. So if you are in a situation like uh, at, at the Boston bombing, Thousand Oaks, whatever, there's not, I mean, most people don't carry tourniquets with them in their pockets every day, everywhere they go. Um, if you want to, that's your choice. You can't go wrong with it. I usually keep a few in my car, uh, but definitely not on my person. What you want to do is find something to improvise uh, putting that tourniquet on. I just picked up a few items around my house. This is just a bandana. I found a butter knife. You want something kind of sturdy that's not going to break once you start applying pressure to it. Uh, a trick I found is to use like a Gatorade cap. Uh, if you're at a bar or a party, whatever, that shouldn't be too hard to find. You just take that little tab that the cap screws onto, um, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So you want to take your strip. This could be a shirt. This could be a bar napkin. This could be anything you really want. Um, but what you want to do is put this down about two-thirds of the way of the, uh, the piece of fabric, rope, whatever you got. Um, and the next thing you're going to want to do, again, kind of hard to do, uh, you're applying it to yourself. Uh, but if you got you got to do what you got to do. So just tie one overhand knot. as tight as you can get, probably not super tight if you're using your teeth and you only got one arm. The next thing you want to do is slide your windlass or whatever you can uh, under that knot. And you see how I've got this, the Gatorade cap uh, kind of stuck up on the edge here. You start twisting, and this is very effective. These don't stretch at all, and they hurt pretty bad to get in. Um, but the next thing, you might need to adjust, depending on the length of it, uh, how far you go up, but you can uh, run your windlass up through the loop in your, of, your, of your Gatorade cap or whatever you need, and 
it should do the same thing here. I could get it in. There it goes. So it keeps it nice and tight in place there. Uh, I be warned that if you're having a little bit of trouble, uh, you might have to do a whole nother crank, uh, just depending on how big this loop is. Same kind of thing, you should start seeing that um, bleeding start to slow down, checking for that pulse. Uh, you don't have a pulse, you've done it correctly, uh, and you should definitely be seeing signs of bleeding, or bleeding stopping. Uh, in this next clip we're going to show you, we're going to do kind of a live fire drill uh, of a simulation, uh, it's not real guys, uh, of how to apply a tourniquet to somebody else uh, at a range accident. Guys, Dave the Station here. We're gonna do a run through of how to apply a tourniquet uh, to a patient. Uh, this can be varied based on SOPs, where tourniquets are placed on the person, how many you have, what kind of situation you're in, if you're in a tactical environment. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna say we need to apply a tourniquet to the left lower leg of uh, our, our patient over here. First thing you're gonna wanna do, come up on scene. Put pressure directly on the wound with your knee, like this. Remove any obstacles to, or that's gonna interfere with your tourniquet. Make sure you grab the tourniquet in the right place. Apply the strap. Make sure you get it down as tight as you can get. Once you got that in, start cranking down. And there you should see the signs of bleeding starting to uh, stop for the sake of my friend here uh, I will go ahead and release this obviously you're gonna want to mark the tourniquets time back at the house here I just wanted to go over a few things so that's kind of the, the proper way to put a tourniquet on a patient um, you've got to be cognizant of your unit SOPs uh, they can kind of dictate if you have tourniquets placed on each extremity and lower pockets if you've got them on a belt and pouches on your you know, chest rigs vests whatever um, how many you carry what types of tourniquets how to use them uh, definitely familiarize yourself with your services, uh, protocols, and standard operating procedures. Um, if you have any questions about uh, the gear uh, or the equipment I'm using, um, definitely feel free to send me a message or leave me a comment. Thank you very much.